Good evening. I am privileged to have this opportunity to speak to you for a few minutes on some of the challenges which India faces. What have we done so far? And what's the road ahead? Let me begin by where I stopped. Let me begin by recounting on one or two things which I said in the acceptance speech of my award. I said that we lost our iconic global position long ago. We ran into a long colonial era which destroyed the roots of the foundations which India had cherished. We struggled along. In the initial years of Indian planning, our policy makers were embedded to an excessively socialist idea of a planned economic development. They were driven by a Fabian socialist tradition, achieved, of course, the twin purpose of non-emergence of colonialism once again. But in the process, they over-regulated our economy. Unfortunately, the initial leaders were far too impressed by the uneven success, retrospectively speaking, of the centrally planned economies and Soviet Union. So what happened then was that we began to excessively believe in the power not of private capital, not of innovation, not of crafting pedagogy and teaching methods which would be suitable to the needs of India, but of over-regulating it with government intervention at every step of the game. How was this financed? This was financed primarily by excessive borrowing, which made our debt position exceedingly tenuous, which landed us in periodic balance of payments crisis, which threatened the macroeconomic stability of India. So when all this began to surface, in 19, by 1980, our debt had become already vulnerable. We compounded this problem by excessive external commercial borrowing, excessive dependence on foreign aid, and excessive dependence on the power of multilateral institutions by borrowing from the World Bank, the International Monetary Fund, and later on from the Asian Development Bank. This did not help us in the long run. But the 1991 crisis which happened, we blew the lid off by a combination of factors, propelled us from an era of what Anand had described complacency, propelled us to move in a new direction. Over the years, we have achieved several things with the continuation of this process of change. We have achieved five things. First of all, as my good friend Lawrence D. Summers the youngest president of Harvard University, had said successively that in human civilization, at no point in time, in such a short period, so many millions of people have been driven out of poverty into an arena where poverty becomes a matter of the past. No other country has achieved such a massive success in poverty reduction as indeed India has. That was the first achievement. Second, given the fact that the current prime minister, and given the fact that I had the privilege to serve with another NDA prime minister, Sri Atal Bihari Bajpayee, he achieved for the first time macroeconomic stability as a centerpiece of economic policy, something which the present prime minister deeply believes in. You see the linkage between the period of Atal Bihari Bajpayee and the period of present prime minister in continued belief in macroeconomic stability, which I believe is centerpiece for our long-term economic growth. This enabled us to crawl out of the 4.5% economic growth to periods when we achieved 7 to 8% economic growth. The current economic sluggishness is cyclical, it is episodic, it is transient. So what do we need to, 
do from here on in the next five years to get to the kind of vision that the Prime Minister has of a $5 trillion economy. First and foremost, we need to continue to pursue macroeconomic stability at any cost. Second, we need to change our education and health systems to align them with a the kind of pedagogy which will create the jobs of tomorrow because the present educational structure creates jobs of today which may or may not exist tomorrow and how do we make our education system viable to reach out for that? Third, how do we redesign our health systems and our skill inculcation systems which provides employment for the jobs of tomorrow and which enables a very healthy India to contribute to its economic well-being and welfare? What is the fourth thing which we need to do? How do we harness the latent entrepreneurial talent some of which was described by Anand Mahendra very effectively, to be able to catapult that latent entrepreneurial talent by using what latest technology has able to offer to India, marry entrepreneurship with innovation, and you'll get a quantum change in total factor productivity and a quantum change with which we are unable to grow. How does this happen? Does it happen automatically? Perhaps not. But I think that the fifth and most important thing is how do you, does India grow from the triple engine? The engine of innovation, the engine of harnessing is very young population. And what is Prime Minister has described, the power of different demography in a managed way which enables unleashing of the entrepreneurial talent. And Along with this, we need to ensure that the agricultural practices of India, which have remained somewhat embedded in time, and I regrettably have to confess that this has been one of the stark failures of our economic system. Agricultural productivity in India remains at one third of what its capability is. So if you want to double farm income, and it's, unless you double farm income, we cannot increase and boost consumption. What can we do by using digital technology to bring about a qualitative change in the agricultural systems with which we are historically inherited? So I think that if you have a combination of managed urbanization in a purposive way, combine this with innovation and entrepreneurship, secure an educational pedagogy system better aligned to India's legacy and better in aligned to India's past, using modern technology to harness that. And if you combine that with the power of what technology gives in improving on our health systems, these five things, in my view, will be able to get us to a growth rate, which will be closer to a, triple dig to a growth rate, which is a double-digit growth rate of 8 to 9%, perhaps reaching 10%. That will enable for us to conquer poverty, which has been a kind of quest which has eluded a successive generations of Indian policy makers. And I do believe and remain optimistic. The current policies, when combined with these five things which I have mentioned, will enable us to get to that golden double-digit number and if you do it by for a decade, then by the power of compounding, you would have wiped out poverty very substantially in the shortest possible time in human history. That will enable India to substantially regain its past. And the roots of Indian civilization would have been fertilized, would have been harnessed, and that would enable the roots to grow into very healthy trees from roots to heights requires these compulsions of growing from the current rates of around 6% to growth rates of a double digit number. That would be a lesson for the human civilization and that would become a major contributor to global prosperity of which we are not merely the recipients but we become prime, op prime actors. The rest of the world has tried to shape us this is a time when we can shape the world 
we can shape the fortunes of the world if you combine these four or five things which I believe is central to the compelling necessities of wiping out poverty, securing better health and better education, fostering innovation, creating jobs. I am a great believer that we are and we will achieve this in a time frame which will be shorter than any other country has ever achieved in human history. I therefore look to the past at providing sustenance to what combining with technology and other factors we will be able to regain our position when the roots of Indian, what roots of India are rejuvenated to meet the compelling needs of tomorrow. Thank you very much for giving me this opportunity.